Hi, this is Mary Greengale, and it's campaign season. Candidates are starting to be interviewed. And I want you to understand that when I interview these candidates, I am asking each candidate for an office the same questions. They get the questions in advance. They can prepare. And then we go through them. I have found this to be a good way to get a sense of how people respond to the questions in substance and also how they differ between one candidate to another. The other thing for candidates that are not opposed, I do not do interviews, but if they are brand new to town government, I do. And I do so because I believe that people have the right to know who's running their town government. And so we meet them, we talk to them, and we ask them a series of questions that's appropriate for their town office. So you will be able to watch these interviews at your leisure and um, keep an eye out for them. And let's get going. Hi, I'm Mary Greendale, and here I am with another candidate. This one is Barbara Petey. And am I pronouncing your name right? Let me yeah, start. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so Barbara is running for the planning board. And um, let's jump right in. How are you today? I'm fine, thanks. How about you? Hanging in there, hanging in there. I, I wish the weather would sort of decide. I'd like you to stay sunny for a couple of days in a row. <laughs> well, I know. I mean, it's sunny out now, and I'd love to be outside, but I get blown over with the I wind. I know. It's been <laughs> incredible. So, Barbara, tell us a bit about yourself. Um, well, I moved here in 91. Uh, I'm originally from Connecticut, but uh, I moved here in 91. Uh, and I've been here ever since. I guess I rented when I first got here and I bought this house in 96. And I plan to die here. So <laughs> I want to make, <laughs> make sure that this, the town stays the way I like it. <laughs> so what is your professional background? Um, well, it's pretty weird, Mary. <laughs> I've done a number of things over the course of my life. I started out as a uh, research technician at Arthur D. Little in the 60s. <laughs> and uh, then I toured the country for a couple of years and worked uh, along the way. And I was a drafter for several oil companies, uh, mineral companies, and uh, soils engineers. And then I came back east. <laughs> And, and then I went into uh, I did environmental research, I think, when I came back uh, with a small earth sciences company. And then I began writing uh, mostly, um, well, of course, development for various com computer companies. And then when I went to SAP, I uh, stayed there for something like 17 years doing uh, course development and teaching and uh, demo development. So I kind of been around the <laughs> yeah a lot. <laughs> yeah, once you once you get up to being a senior. Uh, yeah. You know, that's the case. You have probably haven't been resting your laurels in one place. So why did you decide to do the planning board now? Um, well, because I am retired. <laughs> and I realized over this period of uh, a year that I really needed to get out and be involved in some kind of project other than, you know, my house. And, uh, and I thought the planning board was a place to start. With your environmental background, that should be useful. Yeah, and the drafting is useful because I can read plans and understand what they say and what they're trying to hide. Yeah, um, uh, yeah just generally, I think uh, my, well, I, I guess I think that my uh, life, or work life anyway, has been uh, sort of always trying to figure out how things work and then explain them in English to other people so they understand them and fixing them if they're broke. 
Mm -hmm. That's that's about the thread that ties through my whole career. Okay. Are there any specific skills or experience that you bring? Now you want to talk a little bit about the uh, the whole process of developing curriculum and 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 that kind of thing. Does, is that what, where your skills lie? What is it that? Um, well, I think yeah, uh, that is where my skills lie. My interests are in environmental as well. Um, yeah, I, I have bees, so <laughs> I want no pesticides in the neighborhood. But um, interesting. Yeah, I well, I think it's uh, you know I have a broad enough background that uh, uh, with a, a little time in uh, the position, I I would be an asset to it. Okay. So describe any concerns that you have about the town's bylaws, the land use bylaws, and what changes you might suggest, if any. Well, I've, <laughs> I, I didn't have a good shot at the land use, so I can't really respond to that. Um, I would say that it, it would be uh, once I'm on the board, then I, between now and then, I would have a chance to go through and understand those bylaws, but be able to, you know, take direction from the people who are already experienced in our planning, and then add my own my own uh, observations to that. Okay. Well, the bylaws do dictate how we use our land. Um, how do you feel about increasing residential density in areas that are already developed, for example, by allowing accessory apartments in the... Uh... Yeah. Well, I saw that, and I saw that we already do ex uh, allow accessory apartments in some locations, and only if they're family. Right, related. and that's the issue. Yeah, I, I think, you know... It, we would have to rewrite the bylaws in order to get that through, but I'm not opposed to it. It's a, certainly a way of making some affordable housing here in uh -huh. town. Uh -huh. And excuse me, and if it's done properly, it would add to the value of the town rather than detract. And then uh, in a similar vein, allowing duplexes in the more rural parts of town. We do allow duplexes in the center, but. I think that's a great idea, frankly. <laughs> you know, if done properly, they're just as nice as a freestanding house. And it, obviously if they're maintained, but I mean, if the development is done right, it's it's a, a way to get uh, people with not a million dollars to live here. You think that's a problem? Of course, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not. I mean, it's not my office. problem. I live here. <laughs> yeah, I know. But yes, it is a problem. It is a problem. I would agree. And I think that uh, it's not getting any better. Um, let's talk about business. What steps can the planning board take to attract business to help relieve um, the tax burden on homeowners? Well, obviously, we have to find other businesses to come into town, but good, clean businesses. Um, yeah, um, maybe look at business real estate uh, companies that work for various um, companies. They, that's where I would think that most people looking to replace or remove, <laughs> to put their business in a different location would start off with real estate. And there must be specific real estate agencies that deal with commercial. And I, I would say we start there and see who's looking. And then, you know, if they're if someone we're interested in, then approach them and you know, make an offer. Well, we do, have, we do have several empty buildings here, don't we? In the Lowland yeah. Park? Yeah, I yeah, know there are, there, are, there are vacancies. Yeah. The planning board, though, is really not in the business of marketing. Um, Holliston, that would be probably more the economic development. Uh, right. committee. But um, have you had given any thought to maybe are there any zoning changes or would you consider rezoning any areas of town to commercial or from commercial or industrial? Uh, that's really where, um, you know, the planning board might have a role. 
Well, we I didn't. We just rezoned places, not that long ago, and I thought they really fine tuned it quite well. Uh, the most recent thing we did, I think, was re restoring Church Street to uh, residential from Village Commercial. That was the uh, pretty sure, but it may be that we've done something else that I don't remember. Well, that would have been after they made it into village residential and vis, vis, uh, village com yeah, commercial. Well, the thing is that uh, there, I guess it's more broadly than looking at what we've already done, but rather, are there any things that are currently village residential that you think should be commercial? Or are there places where we are industrial that you would think of putting residential or any kind of zoning changes? No, offhand, I don't see any, actually. Okay. I, I thought they did a nice job when they, you know, they moved the, well, I'm in Mudville, so they moved us off into uh, the village residential because it give, gave the town a little more flexibility with us in these non-conforming areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I thought that was a smart move, and it was also smart making some of that area along, well, Central Street is industrial or village commercial. Um, yeah, I don't, I, yeah, I can't, well, maybe Exchange Street could be, be part of the uh, co village commercial rather than. I think it is commercial. Must be, yeah. Okay, I got it. <laughs> All right. So what do you see as the role of the planning board? in commercial and industrial development. I don't know if you've been paying any attention to the 555. Yeah, I, um, well, I think they have to look at the bylaws and they have to look at what they're uh, trying to put in. And the bylaws consider the, the water, uh, you know, the wastewater in the area, the how big the buildings can be, how tall they are. It's actually on the planning board because of the, uh, requirements to go up around the bylaws, I believe. Well, they're asking for a permit to exceed the height requirements. Right. And well, then to also the, the storage of toxic materials that aren't supposed to exceed 15%. They want more, more toxic materials? <laughs> well, the, the, the real, it's not that they want more, it's that they can't really predict who's going to be there. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't believe that. I, I certainly believe that the developers know who's going in there. They're just not telling us. And I think that's not fair. You don't spend that kind of money in, a, in this kind of an economy without a potential re return. So you know, he's, they've got to know who's there going in there. Is there something that you'd like to accomplish in your first term as a member of the planning board? Well, clearly I need to know more what we should be doing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I don't, I don't have an agenda. I, it's just time that I gave something back to the town. I really don't have an agenda. So it's hard to say what I would hope to accomplish. You know, I, I need some time in service to find out, you know, and talking to people what, what they think and what's going on. You know, I have listened to the planning board meetings on 555, but that didn't, doesn't give me enough to you know that, you know, I could hit the ground running. Were you in the habit of watching the planning board? Have you watched planning board meetings that were not related to 555 to see about normal subdivision control, not control, but development, that kind of thing. Uh, occasionally, but, I, you know, it depends on what's happening when the meetings are. Right. I have not been, you know, studious about always watching now that it's been here. Um, yeah, I, I, the, the reason I ask is just because their normal work isn't quite as intense as this is. I mean, this has been... Uh, an incredibly demanding time. Oh, I'm sure. And, and I mean, you know, that's the thing I have is time. <laughs> you know, it's not like I'm trying to squeeze it in between a job and taking care of my uh, living space. But, um, you know, and, 
and I'm just nosy enough to, you know, be willing to spend the time digging through what they're proposing or what we have to vote on. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to say to the public as a closing comment about why you're running other than that you haven't already said, because obviously you've been very clear that you want to give back to the community. Mm -hmm. uh, well, what I would also add a, a piece of diversity to the board that it's been missing. It looks like they're all men. Um, no, there's a woman on it. She's the agent, not on the board, right? No, Karen Langton is a Karen Langton is a is a member, oh. and then Karen Sherman is the is the the agent. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, then I don't do that. <laughs> um, well, no, but it, you bring another another uh, you know perspective from a female a female perspective if that's it, and you and you are. I'm going to guess older than Karen Langton is, so we can add that. You know, I don't know how old she is. yeah, she looks a whole lot younger than I am. So um, I, I would say we'd be adding, you know, maturity perhaps and some wisdom that comes with that, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got to go with that. Oh, yeah. go I don't know, Mir. Don't talk to any of my friends. They might argue that point <laughs> about the maturity. That okay, people. yeah. But, or, <laughs> <laughs> well, then that may, maybe you'll be bringing some fun to the board. <laughs> well, I, I think that everything should have a, a piece of fun in it, or I, why do it? Yeah, good yeah. point. Good point. And, and um, yeah. So I, I think that, you know, if not too many people in town know me, I don't believe, because you know, a good deal of the time, most of the time I was here, I was working and traveling. So I didn't get around town too much, but um, yeah, I'm I'm really a good person to be on a a, a committee like that or a, a board to to hold out for the right things for this the town, and I'm sure the other the other members of the planning board are too. But yeah, I. Yeah, I, I bring my perspective to it, and whether that's a, I, I believe it's an addition, but I have no way of knowing that. Well, thank you very much. I've appreciated listening to you and, and your candid uh, evaluations of yourself, because you've been very upfront about what you do know and can do, and you appreciate the fact that you can't go in there and change the world. Oh, no, I do not know. I don't, you can't do that. Yeah, no, unfortunately. Although if you could, think of how popular you would be. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, it depends on who, who's, who wants, what change they want and what they get. Good point, good point. Yeah. But, All right. but, but, you know, it, we, we have to keep it in, in uh, the direction that, the majority of the citizens want, I think. Agreed. All right, Barbara. So the um, election is May 25th. We'll remind people, we try to remind people regularly. Right. And, uh, thank you again. And I'll probably see you around the polls. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me. All I right. appreciate it. Thank you.